Hickok 45. It's 1911 day at the compound. Now, I know you're going to have a lot of questions about this firearm, but I like to shoot first and answer questions later. Like this. <laughs> Woo! Nice. Oh, two liter. <laughs> Oh yeah, 1911. Uh, I just enjoy the things, you know. Even everybody says they look small in my hands, big old 1911s. But I don't know. I don't really see it. I mean, it's just a 1911. A 45 is a 45. My hands aren't that big, are they? Well, let's take a look at it. I mean, I know it's uh, 1911s are big old heavy guns, but uh, uh, I guess it's a function of being six eight and everything, having large hands that makes everything look small. And here's another one over here, 1911. Oh, well, what do you know? It is small, isn't it? <laughs> oh, wasn't that a funny joke? It is smaller than the standard 1911. You could say it's uh, scaled down about 85%. There's a 380. Here's a 45. Look at that. And that's kind of what a 380 is, a scaled down 45 ACP. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So we got the big fat bullet that goes with the uh, 1911 45 ACP. So I just wanted to show you the, the difference in, in the size. This is uh, the branding, of course, the 1911 380, and it is 85% of a real 1911 in, in terms of size. It's scaled down to 85%. Now, when you pick it up, if somebody uh, just told you, hey, look at this miniature 1911, you know, what do you think the size of that is in, in uh, relation to a standard? You, you, you might say 50% because uh, it, seems, it seems small. It's thin and it just seems really small and it's fairly light, but uh, it's 85%. I guess it just doesn't take much to, to make a big difference. Okay, now you can see it's 1911 all the way, 380 chambering. Now they came out with this gun, uh, Browning did in uh, it was a 2011 and uh, sent as a you know centennial celebration, I guess, of the 1911. Or was it the 100 year anniversary? I don't know, people in Kentucky can answer that, but it's, it's, it was uh, in 22 caliber, as I understand the, the 2011 version, the kind of the centennial, you know, I don't think it was called a centennial, but it was to celebrate the 100 year uh, anniversary of the 1911, okay? Like we did a video to celebrate that too. And then this one came out in 380 just uh, last year, 2014, I believe. So uh, we've had these on our radar for quite a while and they're, they're not always that available. Appreciate that. Uh, th this firearm is interesting. Uh, John's been uh, wanting to get one for a long time. I think since we first started seeing them at uh, SHOT Show or the NRA conventions or wherever it was. And uh, so we've had it on a radar. Uh, he just really likes them and uh, has wanted to try one out. And me too. I like 1911s. And this is a little baby 1911. I'm not as crazy about 22 long rifles and, and these kinds of things, but it probably is a good gun too. I've never fired one. This one's their first center fire, as I understand, in this miniature uh, configuration. You see, it's a 1911-380. It's a model number. It's one of their black label guns. They uh, That's a division of Browning, as I understand, that uh, focuses more on tactical things. And, uh, and this is kind of a tactical version. It's a 380 uh, defensive pistol. It's not just... Ooh, be cool to, to to scale down a 1911, you know, and just for the coffee table or something. Yeah, that's not what it is necessarily. Now it comes in some different uh, finishes and all that, and wooden grips and some really nice looking firearms. But this is really a carry gun, and it's got some of the best stuff you find on a 1911 that a lot of people like, like a nice beaver tail there, and you got an extended uh, slide uh, lock. Uh, the uh, Thumb safety, you got a nice trigger. It's kind of a, like a commander hammer. You got a straight mainspring housing. You got the little bump there on, on your grip safety that helps make sure it engages. You got checkering up here, uh, kind of a long trigger. Uh, you know, the serrations are really nice. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, I think it even has a, well, I guess that's not beveled. Well, it's a little bit beveled, even the magwell. So it's really a, Tactical gun. It's it's for for carry. It's got a lot of the same stuff this firearm has. Boy, that thing seems big and heavy compared with this. It's like picking up a Desert Eagle uh, after picking this up. And it has. Let me load the magazine while I'm yakking about it. But it it has a kind of a weird uh, mix for the frame. As I've read, it's uh, it's a mix of polymer and metals or something. They won't give out. Browning won't give out the 
the, the exact mix. It's a secret. Now, I'm not going to tell you because I don't know it. But it's some kind of mix that's very, very light. I think the gun weighs about 17, 18 ounces. And uh, it really is uh, targeting that market of little 380 uh, defensive pistols. A lot of people, you know, for a lot of people, a 9mm is, is, is pretty stout. I know for many shooters, many of you watching, it's not. But, uh, you know, a 380 is very, very attractive to a lot of people. There's little recoil. It is, you know, same diameter bullet as a 9mm. But it's uh, a little less punch. It's not going to kick as much. So it, it's attractive. And with modern ammunition, it is, uh, can be very effective. Okay? It's, it's not a, a laughing matter, 380. Uh, there's a lot of great advances in ammunition these days, and I, I need to get some hollow points uh, from from Federal. I, I don't guess I have any. We'll fire a couple of uh, off-brand. I think these are Remington or somebody. We'll we'll fire a couple of those. Uh, a lot of people just carry hardball in a 380, you know, anyway. But I thought we'd make sure it feeds them okay. I have shot it for several days now, and I just have the one magazine, but I'm not in any trouble. Uh, you know, we'll see how it does in the video. And I've taken it apart, cleaned it a couple of times, which I like to do, and I do keep my guns clean, and, and I really especially like on a new pistol to take it apart and see how the fit and finish is and, you know, and everything. It, it's a good time to do that when you're cleaning it. So, put around the chamber, take a couple of shots here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and shoot this 2 liter right here up close. Got her on safe. I'll put it in my holster. Uh, take a look at the bottom of that 2 liter. We have a... Uh, uh, we meet and greet the last uh, few days in uh, East Tennessee at Sevierville, the Bud's Gun Shop over there. I had a great meet and greet, uh, great turnout. It was just fun. Met a lot of families, a lot of youngsters, a lot of old guys, a lot of 20-year-olds, just a, a real mix of folks, and uh, it was great. Anyway, uh, this fellow, he, I told him just put his, he brought me a two-liter. I told him to, he brought it to me to shoot. And <laughs> I said, well, I can't promise anything. We'll try to do it. So I put it in the truck. Brought it home. He, I said, put your, uh, your initials on it. We'll put your initials. I believe his name was Wyatt, but we got his initials on the bottom. They drove up from Orlando, Florida to meet John and me. How weird is that? Of course, gave him a hard time about doing that. But uh, he was, I think, uh, 11 or 12 years old. And uh, his mom brought him up, so it was great to meet them. But I told him I, I will try to remember to do that. Uh, and so anyway, here I am remembering. How's that? Pretty amazing, huh? So anyway, I'm going to shoot your two liter before I forget. And it was great to meet you, you and your mom. Uh, even if you are so sick, you drove from Orlando just to meet us. All right, so here's your two liter. I'll try not to shoot where we put your initials, okay? <laughs> All right. Even the Florida two liters explode. <laughs> uh, so we appreciate that. Got a free two liter. There's another one. <laughs> Bang! I'm gonna shoot that green one up there. And that red one. Oh, look at that! Cool. Uh, <laughs> I had to finish him off. Uh, like I said, one magazine. Now, what's this gun for? Uh, you know, it, it would work as a carry gun quite easy. it's very pleasant to shoot because it's got a longer slide i've got my glock 42 in fact which i've been carrying uh, today i pulled it out uh glock 42 it's clear just to give you an idea it's a 380 uh in terms of size now in terms of the the grip and everything there's not a lot of difference it's a little longer it holds eight rounds in the magazine by the way the 42 holds uh, six, holds seven with this extension on the magazine. So we're talking seven versus eight rounds. So it's going to be a little bit longer. And but now where it's big difference, of course, is in the slide length. It's it's got a longer slide. All right. So if you can accommodate that longer slide, uh, you've got a 380 that is uh, really shootable. And because of that longer slide and a little extra weight, it's very comfortable to shoot and it has all the controls of a 1911. If you're familiar and, and you like a 1911, the feel of it and it's the operation, you know, that's what you've got. So that's probably would appeal to a lot of people, all right? And one thing I noticed I'll show you is uh, it, it's actually thinner than the Glock 42. 
Look at the difference there. See, not a lot, but I mean, it's thinner than a Glock 42. It doesn't take much to be a lot when you're talking about thickness. But now it's not, <laughs> and it's a whole lot thinner than a standard 1911. Look at the difference there. Okay, so that kind of gives you an idea where it fits size-wise. I don't know, maybe it wouldn't appeal to you as a carry gun, but uh, there are a lot of people that do like a 380. Let's load that magazine up. <coughs> the trigger is really, uh, really nice on it. It's got a nice break, and that's what you get with the 1911. For all the faults of a 1911, uh, you know, people like to bash them. Some people do. Uh, you have your thumb safety and your grip safety and all those kinds of things. Uh, you do get a nice trigger, or you can get a nice trigger with a 1911, as we all know. And uh, that is a pretty nice one, because it's more of a single action trigger. Okay. And this one seems to shoot pretty much right on. Why don't we see if I can hit the gong with it? Okay. All right. Now it's a little, little grip and everything. I have to be careful. I want to pull it left. All right, gong worthy. At least it was gong worthy. Let's calm down. I think I'm going high. I'm not sure. It, uh, it tends to print just a little bit high at the close range targets. I know you have to take a six o'clock hold, but uh, it shoots right on. It's just me and my big old hands, uh, you know, missing with it. So I get a lot of practice loading with one magazine. It does ship with one magazine. And I think I already told you it's around 650, 700 bucks. I'd like to hit the gong again. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I was aiming down. A bit lower. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't shoot that high over there, but I got him again. That's what I want to do. The cowboy needs to be hit. Got him. <laughs> it, it's a fun little shooter. Uh, for some people, it probably could fit your hand just uh, wonderfully. Okay? Somebody with a normal hand. A lot of these little 380 pocket guns, uh, they're very, very, very small. So this is a little unusual in that it's a little bit bigger firearm, but still chambered, chambered in uh, 380. So if that appeals to you, you might like this thing. Ah, you'll see it on E-Gunner. All right, let's try, uh, let's try Cowboy again. One hand. All right, felt good. It's, uh, of course, what it's really for, a defensive pistol. So let's make sure it will work for that, okay? Oh, let's put a couple of these hollow points in, too. We'll put them near the top. Two, three, four, five, six. So we got six hollow points in it. Let's make sure it'll feed them. Okay. I'll put it in this holster, okay? This is just for a Glock 19, I just, something it would fit. Now actually what you're gonna use this for, I'm gonna back up a little bit, of course, is, uh, is when you are suddenly confronted by a garbage can lid. And, uh, cause this would be the typical distance that that confrontation would probably, uh, you know, uh, occur. And if you're ever really gonna have to engage a garbage can lid to save your life or the life of your loved ones, it wouldn't be a lot, you know, uh, further away, probably. So you would just have this firearm. And, you know, and uh, it looks like it would do the job, and it fed the hollow points, too. So garbage can lid out of commission. All right. So I have to remember, and you have to remember, uh, that uh, a lot of what I do is just fun. I mean, shooting is a sport with me more than anything. It's a, it's a pastime I've always enjoyed. And I have to tell you that. And uh, the defensive side of it is just one component. It's kind of a, a side benefit, you know, of being a, a shooter and a hobbyist and, 
you know, enjoying firearms, you, uh, you at least have a certain level of proficiency, familiarization with, with the firearm. Uh, you can get further training, of course, and uh, I would advise that. But uh, at least if you are a shooter, you have firearms like this, uh, no matter what you're doing with them, if you're shooting in an 80-yard gong or whatever, uh, you're having fun and you're building proficiency. But it's the close-up garbage can lids that, you know, uh, could be the most important uh, aspect of shooting, you know. And being able, to, being able to do that quickly if you need to. And that's kind of what this pistol really is for. Uh, this is not a pistol I would enjoy taking to a, a shooting match, you know, or anything like that. Yeah, you know, I did struggle hitting the gong with it. I could mess with it, and I could probably get to where I could hit it every time. Well, most of the time. <laughs> the the sights are black, and you don't have any dots or any white or anything like that. That affects me. I like a I like a little color on my sights or something. So they're just they're just black, you know. Hard to say, but uh see any other excuses for missing the gong so that's just me you know missing the gong i could figure out where to hold and uh should be able to hit it oh i just remembered magazine disconnect negative negative magazine disconnect so uh maybe something you like but it definitely has that all right so uh pretty cool little pistol uh okay we had no malfunctions did we so before the video during the video and after well, no, we haven't had an after the video yet, but before and during, we've not had any malfunctions. We've not had any uh, any problems with it. So, Browning, it carries the name Browning. It should be quality. John Browning invented the 1911, the 380 cartridge. Uh, John Browning knew his stuff. So, unless we mess it up, it ought to work, right? So, anyway, cool little gun. Uh, we appreciate uh, Bud's Gun Shop sending us that. And... Uh, Federal premium sending us plenty of ammo to feed it. Life is good. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out, uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it. Okay? Thank you.